Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate you because Academy of Motion Pictures and Arts have added Joram to their collection. So, how does it feel to be uh, to be a part of this project, and why is it important, sir? Can you explain? Uh it uh, it's a special project for me. Uh, because uh, I mean, not because uh, it's been a part of Oscar Library or uh, any other award, but mostly because it's been a special process of making this film to actually understand the land that I had never explored before. I'd done a documentary in the uh, uh, tribal regions of Odisha, but uh, Jharkhand ke tribals to actually look up really close to them. And of course, a story that's written by Devashish Makija, who's spent uh, years living with the tribal uh, tri tribals. I mean, that story hasn't just been written sitting in Bombay. The story was actually written living with the tribals. So I think the process of actually understanding the life, the problems, uh, uh, and to actually bring a cinematic narrative to it, to reach, uh, to reach out to the audience. I think that has been a very special process where uh, also Devashis has asked me to always go beyond my limits and challenge ourselves a little more than what we've actually done before. So I think that's exactly what remains the most special. I mean, this film is special for me because of that. I mean, uh, what we achieve out of the film in terms of awards or the jury, uh, I mean, the Oscar collection, that's a very uh, different aspect altogether. That's a nice way of understanding the appreciation. But apart from that, I think uh, uh, the process of making this film has been really special. Your father is a filmmaker, so how huge influence he had on you? And did he give any advice while you were joining the industry? Uh, so you asked me two big questions, actually. First, uh, my father is a filmmaker and what kind of a contribution that has in my life. So the biggest contribution I've had from my father is I have been exposed to great films. I mean, the kind of French cinema, the kind of, uh, you know, films from India, uh, from Satyajit Ray or uh, uh, Ritwik Ghatak, uh, all these films that had an impact on him, he actually showed me while I was growing up. I mean, in a time when people were watching the mainstream Hindi, Hindi cinema, my friends were watching mainstream Hindi cinema. I was given access, I mean, he always got me access to films uh, that are like doing really good across the world. I mean, he used to tell me to see this set of films. These are Hollywood films, but they are not the normal Hollywood films that release in the theaters in India. I mean, but then watch these films. The kind of exposure I got about world cinema, I think that in the back of the head and actually was uh, helping me grow in some way uh, that I never realized for a long time about understanding of uh, the aesthetics. Uh, but that has been the major con contribution about uh, his contribution because he used to make films, he used to uh, shoot a lot of stuff. Because but I was always inclined towards photography and I always wanted to be an automobile engineer. I mean, back in the days. Yeah. So I always wanted to be an automobile engineer, but gradually uh, things changed. I watched, I mean, there were films that I saw that changed me and then I decided to be a filmmaker, but slowly that nurturing was Any happening. particular film, film, sir? Any particular? Honestly, it was Devdas uh, by Sanjay Leela Bansali and the way uh the whole uh, everything was designed the way it was narrated visually the cinematic experience shot by Vinod Pradhan I think and I read so much about how all the generators were used uh I mean they used to shoot after everyone else to pack up because they needed all the generators they had so many lights the temperature on the set was 50 degrees but Bombay temperature was 30 degrees so you know things about how they had uh I mean, how they had actually achieved such a cinematic, um, they created such a cinematic experience is something that uh, I was really excited about. And that's when I decided I should be doing films. And Lagan, of course, before that was that impact somewhere was like, okay, that's a great film, but how well it's narrated. But Devdas is something that changed me. So as you have said uh, that you wanted to become an automobile, in automobile engineer, but... Uh... 
you choose film uh, cinematography so you had any formal training did you went to film school no no yaar i did not get uh, i applied at fti i didn't get through fti there's tough competition there are better students who got fti i uh, could do the film appreciation course in fti this was before i applied for the cinematography um so fa course uh, i did in the year 2008 so that is my only formal training that i've had about films but it's a great course fa course film appreciation course is a great course where you have people from all over the country we are watching films discussing about the films then we are being taught about the aspects of filmmaking in general but the thing is from morning till you sleep you're only talking about films because that's a summer course that ha- happens at fti and nfai together so yeah i mean that's the only formal education i've had so you have talked about fti and you may have seen a video that students were molested by mobs in fti so what was your reaction on that uh i don't know if they are molested but i beaten, i think i beaten, saw the beaten 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 ha huh, yeah of course i mean that's uh, the most heartbreaking thing that i could actually see online uh i can't believe the fact that uh, uh hindus we as a nation celebrated uh, uh ram mandir uh, after all these controversies and after all the hatred that surrounds uh, around it but uh, even after that how insecure can people be that they ha- they are so scared of a poster i mean that's a opinion that's a freedom of speech that you cannot take away from people i mean then what is the difference i feel really heartbroken to see that this is happening in fti because the days i spent at fti fti was a place that would give you free uh, wings to fly would let you think would let you explore uh would let you actually uh that's a place where i felt the nation is getting better but today after 15 years seeing uh, fti to go through this i feel heartbroken uh uh also against the people who did this uh i don't hate them but i feel really sorry for them because if i start hating them then what is the difference between them and me you know they are the ones who want to sp- spread hatred i'm not the ones who i'm i'm not somebody who ha- uh, likes to hate i just feel bad for them for their uh, illiteracy for their uh, uh, i mean uncivilized behavior their animal behavior whatever they are i mean they are just backward people all is all that i can say that i just feel bad for them i i'm not mad at them i'm not i don't hate them i am not going to go and beat them up because there is some difference between them and me and that should stay that way yeah. sir if somebody wants to join this industry as a filmmaker or cinematographer so in term of you what step he or she can make to get into this industry but the first thing of course to understand films watch films in general because if you want to uh in fact anything that you want to do you always need to lo- know the history of that field i mean if you are into automobile engineering you need to know the history of automobiles where how have the car engines evolved where have we reached so in terms of cinema as well like you need to know the history of films like where did films ex- ex- start how did they start and how their films have evolved from like you know small black and white clips to silent cinema uh, to sound uh, films with sound and uh, dialogues and of course then from black and white to colors and then to cinema wide screen cinema scope the way the films have evolved you need to understand the history of films exactly first because unless and until you understand what's the history of filmmaking and films are you can never have that disciplined approach while you are making your own films because that's when you will know that how, when you're making something are you going backward or are you going forward with the evolution of cinema so if you want to be a filmmaker i think that's the first thing that you need to do and second of course keep shooting keep uh, start clicking pictures click uh, shooting videos writing stories i mean there are various um, aspects i mean you want to be a director you want to be a writer then you need to start writing and of course uh, one thing i always say people uh, when there are very young people who are actually working um 
nowadays that i tell them that you know you need to stop working and go back and uh, live your life because you can just learn to uh, tell story uh, i mean tell stories but when you'll get an opportunity to be a director you won't have stories to tell i mean what is the point of actually uh, learning the art of filmmaking without having a story to tell when you when you grow up to make films you know so you need to have that childhood you need to have that you need to go through life to be able to tell stories when you that's what i keep saying people uh, young people that live a life and then you'll have stories coming out naturally so cinematography is such a visual medium so while shooting something do you take any reference from other another film like do you think about this like uh not really i think the first thing is to commit yourself to uh the script i mean for me i think my first approach is to understand the script where i'm telling the story what i'm telling the story and the way the narrative is written have i watched anything like that before because i have seen films i've watched films and uh things have evolved gradually so first is to actually crack the right narrative and then to understand how the director wants to narrate it also is very important in terms of whose perspective is it telling the story do you want to stay closer to the character or you want to stay far away from the character and see the drama or you want to see closer to the character and see the emotion i mean all these things come into picture and then we will design about how you going to approach the film uh, referencing lighting referencing is something uh, you can take a picture people use hollywood referencing films and everything but the point is that when you're using hollywood film references in indian context it just doesn't work because we have different skin tones we have a different world here i mean the colors that we use in our country are very different from the people color they use abroad now you put those colors here it look like an ad film as simple as that it is it doesn't look like a uh, authentic film work so that's the reason you need to be very particular about uh, what colors you're using and how you need to give the right imagination uh, thankfully nowadays the production designers the new production designers they are very clear about what kind of colors uh, of course referencing in terms of visual referencing if you're saying it mostly is about the colors and the texture and the things that we see and of course what is the mood of the climate the weather that we're shooting in that comes later but the mostly the colors and everything the texture that uh when we visit the locations of the of the where the story is based we find out the colors i mean um, for example i was doing a series the amazon series that i was doing which will release later this year the name of the series is called dupaiya now uh it's about a small village in bihar we're shooting in madhya pradesh now we go to and we had a certain palette in our mind but when we went to this particular village the kind of colors that we saw uh we were actually stunned that you no know, these are people in front of their houses so if i'm wearing a blue shirt my house wall color will be another shade of blue only you know so they wear clothes of their house color so this is something that is not these gaon ke people are not i haven't seen a west anderson film and they have color, color coordinated it's natural for them unko red pasand hai ghar ke deewar bhi red kar do and kapde bhi red pehno unka blue pasand hai to blue kar dete hain so that is how i and we saw all these images we brought them together and we assembled and the majority and that is how we started designing things like what are the then if you like a color you like to put that color in your cycle in your in your painting in the windows on the walls and the clothes so that is the approach now then things gradually change about how you want to go okay sir can you explain in detail what is the job of a cinematographer uh, what what do they do for me the job of a cinematographer is to actually uh bring a story into life bring the visual bring the visuals the imagination the director has in the head of a story to the audience that's my job if my director has an imagination of a particular story how is seeing the world to create that world and to make you watch that world is my job so as simple as that to and somewhere if the director has an imagination which i feel at times is not as committed to the script as it can be that's when i give uh, my ideas like you know if you do something like this your story is this but your imagination is contradicting with the story so that's when we combine together and we join and we create that world so uh, for me 
it's creating the, those visuals bringing the visuals into life into reality from the imagination of the director so and uh, uh yeah telling the story so for me that's the simplest answer sir do uh, cinematographer involved in post production sorry i didn't get the question uh, do cinematographer involves in editing post production i mean uh, yes i mean in all the films that i have done i have my director have shown me the edits and they have taken my feedbacks and uh, see now people take feedbacks and they take notes and they imagine if the feedbacks are going to actually make the film better and it's not just me they take the feedback of the producers as well they take the feedback of the uh, cinematographer as well they take the feedback of a uh, few other people um, um some other editors some other uh, directors and they make notes and they see what is the best a uh, compilation of all the feedbacks and they can make this film uh, this project better in the post production of course this is part one and then in the di that's what i do uh, the color grading and everything that's where i have to supervise and we start cracking the colors the right texture the right mood um, to have that consistency to have the right point of attention in the frame so all of these things we do in the di uh, that's a much later Uh, step but it's a much longer uh, process because to crack the right colors the skin tones and the world it, it's really important so yeah sir your collaboration with hardik matter you have uh, shot his fe- uh, debut feature kamyab and his documentary amdavad me famous so how did how did you guys met and what kind of director he is so hard so i wanted to be director of vikramaditya motwane and uh, sorry one second yeah i wanted to be an uh, an assistant director of uh, vikramaditya motwane uh, but uh, he suggested that because i click uh, click good stills uh, i should start shooting so he told me to make a documentary on his film which eventually later became the making of lutera, lutera. Yeah. Uh, yes and uh, lutera uh, hardik mehta was the script supervisor on lutera and uh, it, it happened that he became my travel roommate whenever we shot in bengal or dalhousie he and i were roommates during all the travels and he used to see my footage as well the way i was shooting and then he told vikram that hey this you're making guy shooting really differently so that's when ikram told him no he's not a making guy he's actually an assistant director who's worked in three films already as an assistant director and now he wants to uh, so i put him into shooting so he has a different eye altogether so that's when hardik approached me and said that you know apart from the assisting work that we do can would you uh, uh, be interested in collaborating with me for the smaller shoot like uh, smaller documentaries or smaller videos for um, Uh, Sony Mix or uh, Dolby, we used to make corporate videos, and that's when we started shooting. And um, we kept shooting smaller stuff. Then uh, I think a year or so later, he said that let's shoot something and create something and get work. That's when we went to uh, Ahmedabad and we shot the Uttarayan, uh, and uh, then we saw a ten-minute edit. and he said look i have created this and i said no no this is not i mean we'll get work out of this but i think we should complete this film as well and it took uh, some convincing but uh, after that he he me we had a bigger in the first uh, time we went to amdavad it was just him and me the second time we went it was him me a sound guy and a second camera person and we had a local support as well and we made the complete film which eventually became amdavad ma famous So six days of entire shoot across those two years in a span of one year uh, different period. Twenty fourteen and fifteen we shot. Twenty fifteen later is it got ready. Uh, it won the national award of course. It won in Budapest. It won in Al Jazeera. And suddenly uh, people across Bombay were watching it and they said that oh these guys will do some magic in Bombay. And then eventually started shooting uh, short films. And uh, Hardik and I did another short film later called The Affair, which is on YouTube. And then. uh that's when people uh decided to put uh, trust in us uh, put their faith in us and let us make kamyab so kamyab was a beautiful story written by hardik so then of course we made kamyab 
so that's how our journey started uh sir how was the experience while shooting kamya with uh, sanjay mishra is oh uh, no sanjay mishra sir is great i mean uh, he had uh, uh, he understood the character so well he understood that we are new guys uh, but we are not new guys who are not aware of what to do we have assisted and uh, we exactly knew what we are going to create we were trying to stay as committed to the script but at the same time we wanted to give the flavor of our experiences because hardik and me while shooting over before kamyab hardik and i have been shooting for 5 years or so 5 6 years smaller stuff documentaries you know short films uh but while shooting we always used to experience life like the uh hardships that people in the bomb in in the city go through the kind of uh, uh you know the um the way everybody is treated in the industry somebody if you're not famous you're the way you're treated and if you're famous how you're treated so that whole difference of uh, treatment the whole uh, difference in the world uh, of how different it is if you live in bandra and if you live in andheri and how different it is if you live in malad of bombay i mean there are three different part of uh, bombay of course i mean we always collected our experiences and we brought in all together in our uh, brought in uh, the film kamyab so it was great it was a great experience it was very challenging but from uh, the day i signed that we knew that this project is happening till the day it was finally completed we were always nervous about uh, are we did we do the right thing is it right or not uh but when i saw it for the i saw it for the first time in mami at mami uh, 2019 uh, screening and that's when uh, i didn't i didn't care about what other people said but i said okay we have done the we have done a good job i mean so that was what i felt when i watched it so you must be aware of the fact that jerem is getting very good response with critics and audiences as well so when did you became the pro, uh, part of the project did devashish makija approach you or he did you approach you i i got a message from devashish makija that uh, uh when i was rapping my last the pre- film before joram kachche limbu there's a film so uh, when i was rapping that film uh, we were, we were having a rap party that's when devashish makija's message comes that i'm setting up my next feature film and i would want you to shoot it uh, when can we talk i said can i call you tomorrow morning and then the next morning i speak to him and uh, he sends me the script right away after that and i read the script the same day and the next morning i go to him and i tell him let's start working on this because that's an amazing story that's a beautiful story now let's start uh, working towards it sir i want to talk uh, talk about a particular scene location the train sequence so how did you guys okay. shoot that scene sir because i was looking at it and was like how could you like shoot that scene uh Uh, was it first, was it real location first of all it was real location it was a real train we shot it in a real train and uh, we because no matter what you can never i mean to make a set train it will still cost the same amount as making a real train so rather just take a real train for higher and you start shooting there uh, because the i mean the fact that we started when we had a train with us we actually i chased devashish in the train itself how it feels like running there and i chased him and then i said okay let me just try chasing you with a phone and then let's start chasing with a phone and this is a way before uh, we start we decided on how to shoot about it this is way before when we were in a train we took we took a train from bombay to pune to understand how it is actually i mean we have always traveled in train but but you actually never know how it's going to be to shoot in a real train so that is what we actually designed in terms of let's run in a real train and see how easy how difficult what things are you seeing while you're running so unless and until you run in a train yourself and the way you see things that is what you translate into your camera now you use camera as a tool to actually bring that experience when you're running was it absolutely smooth no it was not absolutely smooth it was absolutely jerky it was absolutely chaotic it was and sir and if you see something you say, suddenly see uh surprised if something it's a shut door or something like that 
you know so exactly all of that experiences we brought in uh because the ease of running in a train that we see in films is not the reality so we wanted to bring the audience as close to the reality because that that was way more brutal than how you cinematically can make it like uh like driving a car in a straight road might be as simple thing but in films they'll show you in a very dramatic way but a running in a train is actually a very dramatic thing but will show you in a very simple way in films but the whole idea was to actually bring the uh realistic chaos into the visuals into the narrative into the experience of when you watch it should feel like you are running as well i mean you should feel like you are chasing that person you know so that camera is actually the audience i mean that is the whole approach like you if you're chasing manoj rajpai that is how you're going to be seeing him so that's how we actually designed we uh went for a camera called the sony venus which can uh, uh separate the lens and the sensor and the camera body altogether so it was me running just with the lens and the sensor and the camera body was held by one of my camera attendants was running right behind me as well and it was manoj rajpai running ahead of me so he had to be absolutely uh planned and choreographed running in terms of when he's jumping over somebody something and going i have to jump over it and go and including the attendant behind me has to jump over it and go we it's a real train but it's shot in a static location we covered the entire space we created green screen we created the moving lights uh and then we gave the feel of the moving train i mean that's all how the post production comes into uh, play uh, but while shooting also you have to understand how a moving train would feel like so that's how we've actually designed that entire scene so manoj bajpai is the best actor in india has right now so is the was there a particular scene where you thought like wow like he is the best we have right now ah uh, i think all of the all scenes, of all, all of the scenes, because the way he plays with his eyes the way his body language is the way his uh, he reacts to anything um, i mean more than what he says it's about how he reacts as a pose as a character i mean that's when you realize oh this you are you're part of something really special because when you have a devashish makija behind you and you have manoj bajpai in front of you i mean you are sandwiched between uh, a lot of special things happening around you so you know there's it's it's magical to see all of that happening in your frame with you know as a cinematographer you are the first audience of the film you know you're the first audience you're seeing the first visuals after you anyone else is going to see that but when you are seeing the first visuals i think it was something really special everything that manoj rajpai sir did uh, we didn't have to go beyond a second take at times uh, mostly it was one take but uh, at max it was second take for a variation but it was always thorough with the kind of prep we had the kind of workshops he did and the kind of understanding he had about the character so any difficulties you may have faced well while shooting zora yes we were shooting in the summers we were shooting at 50 degrees in the mines we were shooting in the open sun uh, uh, the whole uh, uh i mean the ruthlessness of the whole system and the whole ruthlessness of the uh, environment we wanted to show it but at the same time we didn't want to take away the beauty of the visuals as well i think that was the most challenging part while we were shooting a joram um and of course uh, the i mean somebody like me with the pressure of having a devashish makija behind me and a manoj rajpai in front of me you know it has to be really you have to be really spot on about uh what you're doing how you're doing what your camera is the way it's moving the way you're narrating it what you're seeing and what you're seeing after that so at one point i had to let it go by the instinct because once you are actually immersed into it you naturally feel it so that's when the whole uh the natural narrative des- uh was designed you know uh so in terms of you you have seen joram i guess so in term of you like what joram t- uh, tries to tell us 
Jodam doesn't try to say anything. Jodam just wants to ask questions that you guys need to have in your mind, like uh, what, how privileged you are, and at the cost of what, and uh, what do you think is right and what do you think is not right. I mean, that's the whole idea of Jodam. I mean, it's uh, the whole idea is to actually sow the questions in in the minds of people. It doesn't want to say anything. Uh, sir, uh, right now it is not in OTT platform. So when can we see? Uh, I will call up Z Studios right now and ask them when can we see it? Because I also have been wanting um, to know this answer and they haven't answered me yet. Uh, but I'm hoping by mid February or something, uh, I'm hoping, I said, I don't know. I'm not sure, but I'm hoping by mid February, uh, it will be available on OTT for everyone to watch. So your favorite film, can you recommend some film? Uh, there are quite a lot of favorite films. Um, uh, but you're talking about world cinema. First, sir, world India. cinema, then we will talk about Hindi cinema. First world cinema. Uh, in world cinema, a film that I really love uh, is a John Pierre Junes film called A Very Long Engagement. He made this film after Emily. Uh, this was in 2004, I guess, he made this. Uh, 2002 was Emily. 2004, he made this very long engagement. I think that still is one of my most favorite films. Uh, uh, or a Kislowski's uh, uh, that whole um, trilogy of Red, White, Blue. Uh, that is also one of my favorite, uh, I mean, a favorite set of films. Um, yeah, I mean, for this, these are world cinema films. Indian. Right? Indian, Indian uh, films I have, uh, oh, in world cinema, uh, I would not hesitate to say I love La La Land as well, you know. That's also one of my favorite films. Uh, that, that That is a film that I absolutely fell in love with i mean you fall in love with something but yeah that is one of them indian films that are quite a few uh, quite a few of course devdas being one of them there's devdas there's lagan there's uh, serat which is a marathi film um there's uh, uh, uh rangde basanti i mean uh these would be my favorite set of films from Indian cinema in the mainstream, mainstream cinema, I'm saying. But if you say films as such, uh, I think Bengali films like uh, Pathaj Panchali and uh, Megha Dhaka Tara by Ritwik Ghatak, these would be uh, my favorite films. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So any favorite cinematographer that inspired you a lot? Anil Mehta for uh, Lagan, Vinod Pradhan for Devdas, uh, Kiran Devhans with Ax, uh, and Mahesh Arne with uh, uh, Swadesh. These four cinematographers, these are the only four cinematographers I approached when I came to Bombay. I chased them, I irritated them, I annoyed them till Anil sir gave up and he gave me work and wake up set. So, yeah, but then I chased all these four people. I mean, these were the people who actually changed. I mean, of course, Binod Pradhan sir's uh, Rangde Basanti I love as well. Uh, uh, Devdas I have loved. I've seen his uh, uh, Parinda, 1942 love story. All of these films have grown up. But Devdas was that film that film that changed me quite a lot. Uh, something that I learned later, Ravi K. Chandran's Black or a Dil Chata Hai or a Yuva where also cinematically that great but honestly as a kid when i watched films not knowing much about films i think the cinematography of devdas and lagan and swades uh, and ax kind of film these moved me so i was always excited to try out something okay so great so any future projects currently you're working uh no i'm just in talks i don't know what i'm doing next so i'll see what I can lock. Okay. So any advice if somebody wants to start cinematography, any advice would you like to give? So I uh, don't wait to be a cinematographer to uh, 
start shooting start shooting from now itself start clicking pictures uh, there was a time in 2010 when i used to click pictures i only used to click pictures i didn't work for a single day professionally but i used to click pictures of my flatmates of my friends of uh, any kid in the same building i used to just click pictures randomly around and i used to wonder what am i doing in bombay uh, giving rent and i'm just clicking random pictures and I'm, i don't know where it's going but what happens is this is a constant process of practice because when you actually get to shoot this whole you are not thinking about oh thoda zoom in thoda zoom out thoda left pan thoda right pan you always settle with a nice frame that is something that you practice in the days that you're not working because you're constantly practicing something that you absolutely love and that is taking you where you want to be in the future so as simple as that click pictures see i mean camera is a device that tells you how you should see the world you know i mean use it that a tool i mean later when you have a camera as a tool show the world how you are seeing the world i mean you know so just ensure that you uh, make the most of this magical process of creating images uh, i mean nowadays there's phone there's cam- digital cameras there are dslrs everything is in uh, is accessible so just go on shooting create a nice frame create, create a frame that you love you might not love that frame after 5 days but you love it now so how go back and make that frame better you know once you've gone back making that frame better some 10 times 15 times in the same place and then you get to shoot something with a similar frame you will have always have the best frame not the first frame which will have to always try making six adjustment to make it better you will always have a frame that you've practiced and you've made better so that's my advice you know just keep shooting you'll know i mean it will make sense some day why you're shooting this what you're shooting how you're shooting it will all make sense one day and you'll love the beauty of that process of actually creating that image you know sir thank you so much for joining the podcast sir i think yeah, all the best to you thank you so Any much please feel free to see yeah thank okay. you bye bye